A great tool to have when learning web development is a sample API, something you can test your front end against. In this course, we're going to build a sample API that can be used both locally and via the web. Along the way, we will learn how to build and deploy a minimal API in C Sharp. When we're done, we'll have built an API with sample data that is documented, has health checks, simulates slowdowns and errors, and is deployed both as a Docker container and as a web application on a virtual private server. The end result will be a tool you can use in testing for your own apps. In this lesson, we're going to implement a permissive cores structure and test our API with Blazor WebAssembly front end. So let's jump right in and we're going to start by creating our Blazor front end. Now this front end is just to test the bare minimum to show off connecting to our API. And the reason why I do this now is because I want to show off the cores issue. So let's create a Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. And we're going to call this our um, sample tester or sample test UI. How about that? Sample test UI, we're going to do .NET 9, no authentication, not a progressive web application. We don't need to do that. Um, I will include sample pages just because we're going to build right off the, the home page, and that's just easier that way. It includes Bootstrap and all the rest. So in our pages on the home page, I'm going to modify this to say um, all courses. And we'll say the home instead of saying home, it's courses. And we'll get rid of this welcome to your app. I'm going to include a code section. And in here, I want a protected override. And we're going to say on initialized async. And we'll also add a, um, let's add a model here. So we're going to say models and we're going to say course model, just like in our, um, in our API. Now I could somehow expose, you know, the same pro a shared project for the model. We're not going to do that. I don't find that nearly as useful as people think it should be because of the fact that a front end model is not the same thing as a data access model. So I'm just going to copy and paste. This is not, you know, violating dry or something like that. This is actually a pretty good idea to have a separate model for front end versus your, your API. So now in here, I can say I want a private list of course model control dot to add the using directive for that. It'll make it nullable and say courses. And then in here, let's make this a uh, async task. And we're going to say courses equals await HTTP dot get from JSON. Nope. We have to actually pull in the HTTP client first. Let's do that. Um, so inject HTTP client, HTTP. Now we can say HTTP and then uh, get from JSON async. And we're going to say a list of course model. And the URL is going to be whatever our URL is for our API. Let's go down here and launch settings and it's the HTTPS version we're using. So let's grab that and say, unpin this for now, say slash courses. So that's our, our testing uh, API or our testing UI. Now, this is just a quick and dirty, let's get something going API or uh, API test, okay? This is not anything that is going to be something I want you to do long term or, um, you know, treat as the way to do things. I'm just hard coding the URL. I am, um, you know, not putting any kind of error checking in here. We're just kind of putting this in to show off that it works and to show off the cores issue that we'd have if we didn't adjust cores. So if 
courses is not null, then I want you to say for each var c in courses, I'm going to ask for an anchor tag when href that's going to be equal to at c dot course URL. And yes, it's it's getting all kinds of upset at me. Um, that's okay. And then we're going to set an image tag with a width of 300. We're going to kind of max out the width of this because my images are uh, 1920 by 1080. They're very large. So we're going to kind of shrink this down. And we're going to say it SRC equals at C dot course image. And then we'll close that out. So what it's going to do, it's going to have a whole bunch of images, an image for every course. And it's going to wrap that image in an anchor tag. So you can click on any image and go right to that course. Okay. So that is our front end. It's all we're going to do for the front end. Let's actually change the startup. So let's go back to solution. We're going to pin that, right click on solution, configure startup projects, multiple startup projects. And we're going to say start both of these in that order, the API first and the UI. Now we hit start, wait for it all to build. It's going to take a minute. And when it does, we get our Blazor page and we get an unhandled exception has occurred. We hit F12, open the developer tools and go to console. We'll see that it says that we have the error says access to the local host slash courses from origin. This origin has been blocked by course. No access control allow origin header is present and requested resource. So what it's saying is you've got a cores problem. You can't talk to this API from this URL. It's a different URL that we're calling from. Therefore, unless you were to say, yes, this URL can call that URL, we've got a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to address this issue, then come back and load this page again. So we're not going to change anything else in Blazor. Blazor is probably all set now. So let's close it out and go over the API. We're going to start in program.cs. Um, actually, no, you know what? Let's not. Let's, let's be diligent here. And we're going to go over to the startup folder and we'll say, um, We'll create a new file. So control shift A, and we will say cores config. And we'll do the same pattern, make it a static class. And we're going to do the same thing as what we do in the open API configuration, um, the same pattern. So in fact, I'm going to copy this, just get a pattern in place. Again, patterns are really good for uh, making sure you do the same thing the same way. So add cores services um, with the first thing we do. And then we're going to have use, um, use cores. But the problem with saying use cores is the fact that it's already a use cores um, by default, like as in the cores package. So we're going to say use cores config. Um, or apply, how about that? Apply course config. So yes, it's a little bit different than our previous pattern, but um, but this way we're sure that um, it's it's separate from what the defaults are and we're not gonna step on toes. So let's get rid of the code inside here. So we can say in services we, or in the add core services, we can say services dot add course and then say options. And then we can say policy, whoops, options dot add policy. There we go. And we need to give it a policy name. For now, we're going to give it a name of allow all. We're going to take away the, the string here in just a minute. We're going to say policy, 
and have another arrow. And here we can say policy allow any origin. And then a new line will say dot allow any method. And then we're going to say dot allow any header. This basically is a very, very permissive cores policy. Um, this is something that you probably would not do in your production API, but in our sample API, we don't want to have to say, oh, you know, you can only call from these certain IP address or certain URLs, or you have to call through a service to make sure that, um, you know, you're allowed to call or something like weird like that. We're going to allow everything. We're going to turn this thing and basically, you know, allow any, anything from, from anywhere with any header, with any method. That's our very, very permissive course policy for this specific API. It's the right call for this specific API, but not for every API, just to be clear. Okay. So then down here, we're going to say app dot use course. So that's why we couldn't call it use course here. And we're going to say allow all. And again, notice that string is the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, private um, const string, and we're going to call this, um, uh, let's go with allow, oops, yeah, allow all policy equals allow all, like so. And then we can use this in place of this string here and this string here. That way we know that the policy we create right here is the policy we're applying down here. So we just make sure we're not, you know, uh, miskeying something or, or something else. That way we can change it in one spot and it changes for both. Okay. So that is our add cores service and apply cores config. Now we would add these in two different spots. Okay. So let's first apply our dependency. So that would be in here. We can put it, doesn't really matter where, builder.services.addcoresService. Okay. That's adding our a service to our dependencies. So now our dependencies are connected. Like we know where all our dependencies are from that one file. And then down here, we can say app.applyCoresConfig. So now we have two different places we're applying cores, but it all comes from that one spot, the cores config. Okay. So now we, we've got one more line in our program.cs, but it's pretty clear. So we are um, using open API, we're using HTTPS redirection, we're applying cores config, we're adding the endpoints and we're running. So pretty clear what's going on, I think, um, makes it simple to read. And uh, we know that all of our startup config is in the startup folder. Okay, so now that we have this cores policy applied, let's run this again. Remember that the Blazor app was not working. Let's try it again, and it works now. So there's the, you know, the, the kind of the quilt pattern of all of our different courses that I offer. And if you, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. You can grow and shrink this page, and depending on how big it is, you know, is how many you can see across. Um, but if you click on any of them and you go, hey, I want to learn more about the C Sharp Master Course, click on that, and it takes you right to the C Sharp Master Course page. So we've actually got a, a working application that's, you know, interesting. It does something, you know, it uses our sample API. But the real thing we wanted to show off here is that we correctly applied the core's policy of allowing anybody to call this API because now this page, which was not working, we had not made any changes to this page. We just changed how our API works. And now we get access to our API from a different URL. So that's all I want to show with cores. I want to make sure we apply that. That way you can use and utilize the API correctly and uh, don't have to do any workarounds in order to get access to the sample API when you call it from the web or from Docker for that matter. 
Next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to add health checks and we're gonna in include health checks that are always healthy or always unhealthy or always degraded. We're also gonna add a health check um, that is a random value. So you can, you can change depending on every time you call it. Then we can have a health check on API that we can use as a testing point because sometimes you wanna test out what happens if something is degraded? What happens if something is unhealthy? What happens if it's healthy? How do you want this to, this to work in my code? Um, and so this way you have something to call that has health checks and has all the different states of those health checks so that you can test those out. We'll do that in the next video, but until then, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.